Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to Perfect Edition Comics. I'm your host, Perfect, and today we're going to take a look at my top picks for new collected editions of manga for October 2020. Let's do this thing. Okay, so first up, we've got Marvel Comics. And the War of the Realms Omnibus. This is a big boy. I'm probably not going to be going through everything because the contents are varied and lots and lots and lots. I believe something like uh, well over a thousand pages, maybe 1,400, 1,300. Don't have it right in front of me. It obviously collects War of the Realms, the main event, one to six, and then a plethora of, of extras, um, crossovers, etc. Spider-Man, Punisher, Uncanny X-Men. Um, so this is the main event of the Jason Aaron Thor run. Even though we're still waiting for the Thor Omnis, if you're interested in that and kind of a completionist when it comes to Omnis, I'd definitely pick this one up. Then we have the second omnibus from Peter David's Incredible Hulk run. So this is Peter David and uh, Dale Keown mostly, and it collects the Incredible Hulk 369 to 400, as well as the annual 16, 17, and 18, X-Factor 76, and a bunch of material from Marvel Holiday Special number two. Then we have Infinity Gauntlet Omnibus. This collects the entire event. Um, yeah, it doesn't have the exact contents here, but this continues Jim Stalin uh, and the whole Infinity Saga. And this is the Gauntlet Omnibus that comes out this October. Then we have Dan Slot's run on She-Hulk. Uh, this was really memorable from the kind of early 2000s, around 2004, 2005. This collects his entire run, so the first run of 12 issues, then the follow-up 2005 series of She-Hulk uh, with issue 1 through 21, as well as Marvel Western's Two-Gun Kid. I remember at the time this was uh, yeah really well-reviewed, lots of humor inside of it, and really kind of kicked off She-Hulk for the modern era. Then we have Winter Soldier. This is a complete collection trade, so this uh, collects kind of one of the pieces of Brubaker's epic uh, Captain America run and specifically focuses on Bucky and the Winter Soldier. So this collects Fear Itself 7.1 Captain America as well as Winter Soldier from 2012 1 through 14. Something else a little bit more modern um, is the latest run of Guardians of the Galaxy. So this is Al Ewing on writing and uh, he's been hugely successful with his Immortal Hulk series. So now he takes over the Guardians of the Galaxy and this collects the recent run from 2020. The first five issues are included in this trade. Then onto a kind of, I guess, cult modern classic, uh, Donny Cates book with a very, how can I say this? funky, psychedelic, futuristic, trad moore art. For some, they really don't like it. Others really think it's fantastic. This is the trade paperback version of Silver Surfer Black, and this covers the one to five uh, complete mini series that came out. Then we have something kind of peculiar for me. This is a Star Wars trade paperback. It's based on Obi-Wan, and it comes from Jason Aaron's run, so the kind of the, the first set of, of modern Star Wars books, not the current run now, but the one from 2015. And it is a strange collection, and that's why I put it in here, because for some completionists, maybe they want these, but it kind of jumps around and collects all the issues that tell Obi-Wan's story during this period of Star Wars. So it's Star Wars in 2015, issues 7, 15, 20, 26 to 30, and then also material from issue 37. So for completionists, um, yeah, it's been tough to collect most of the Star Wars stuff. There's been one Omni, uh, there'll be a Dr. Aphra Omri, Omni, but apart from that, um, yeah, it's been a bit sporadic. So at least this kind of maybe fills a gap, but I'm not sure who really wants this because it's a very disconnected part of the story and kind of goes for the backup stories about Obi-Wan. But if you're a fan, then maybe this is for you. Next up, um, yeah, poster books. I kind of speculate and think sometimes I should put them in this, sometimes I shouldn't, but this one stands out. So Mondo is basically a graphic design company and they've gone about kind of remixing uh, classic Marvel iconic characters. Uh, and yeah, these are beautiful works of art. A lot of them are kind of sold out, signed um, actual 
original pieces of art all gone and very hot in the aftermarket. But if you want a piece of Mondo art for your wall, this is a cheap and effective way to get it in a beautiful poster book. Can't really recommend this one more. But uh, yeah, if you're not about posters, that's fine. But this will probably convert you for sure. Very funky and stylistic, not your standard comic art. Can kind of be welcome in any home, whether you're a fan or not. Next up, we have DC Comics. Kicking it off, we've got Mr. Miracle. This is the deluxe edition of the 12, uh, 12 issues that, uh, yeah, I mean, if you don't know about this now, it's Tom King and kind of really kicked him up a notch as, as a great writer over the last couple of years. He did this as well as Vision and, and those two kind of maxi series really um, cemented his modern writing superpower. Um, this collects again issues of Mr. Miracle 1 to 12, which is the complete run as well as sketches, scripts, and then full pencil art to issue number one, all in deluxe edition format. Next up, we've got an Omni. This is the Books of Magic Omnibus Volume 1, and this covers Books of Magic 1 through 32, The Children's Crusade 1 to 2, Vertigo Preview number 1, Vertigo Visions Doctor Cult number 1, Arcana Annual number 1, Mr. E 1 to 4, and the Books of Fairy Oberon's Tales, or tale one to three. Then we have slightly controversial, but still something that many people want to collect. This is the complete collection in one single hardcover for Jeff Johns and Gary Frank's Doomsday Clock. So this collects all 12 issues of the Maxi series. There's already been two hardcovers in the slipcase that you can get, uh, but this collects it all in one shot. Then we have Hard Time Complete Collection, or Complete Hardcover. This is a series from the early 2000s. I remember reading this in floppies, really enjoyed it. Thought it was something quite different for DC and felt more like a Vertigo book than it did a standard DC superhero book. Uh, again, my memories of this are really good. Haven't read it in many, many years. Um, but this collects the full Hard Time 1 through 12 and then Season 2, 1 through 7. Then we have this box set, which I thought I'd throw in here because it's very interesting. A lot more people are starting to pick up the young adults graphic novels. And this collects three of them in a, in a box set. It's got Under the Moon, uh, Catwoman. It's got Harley Quinn Breaking Glass and then Mera Tidebreaker. So all three of those in a slipcase box set. Then, uh, yeah, this isn't what everyone wants because everyone actually wants Jeff John's JSA reprinted in omnibus format. But if you're collecting it in the chunky fat trade paperbacks from DC, then you'll be happy about this one. This is the fourth volume of those chunky trades and collects his JSA run issues 32 through 45. Then another poster portfolio that I thought I had to throw in just because uh, there's so many fans of Greg Capullo and especially Greg Capullo with his run on Batman. So this kind of looks at his masterful work in Batman uh, and basically takes 20 of his artworks and makes them into posters. Again, poster portfolios are probably the most cost-effective way of getting comic art on your wall and they normally have a wide variety of art by different artists so that you can actually kind of pick and choose uh, characters and themes and you could even swap them out every year and you'd still have enough for a couple of years to kind of you know redesign your your space or your or your comic room or collection area as much as you want next up image comics first off there's november which is the third hardcover collection by matt fraction I would say that this is one for fans of Darwin Cook. So the late Darwin Cook had a, a very traditional classic style that many, many fans really adored. Elsa Charretier, or Charretier, not sure how to pronounce her name, but she really embodies that Darwin Cook stylistic um, yeah, feel to, to her work. And um, with Matt Fraction's writing, sometimes he's hit and miss, but when he's hit, he's really hit. Um, Matt Hollingsworth on colors and there's this really funky handcrafted lettering style by uh, Kurt and Kenny and overall this makes it a really clean and beautiful package I'd really suggest taking a look there's three hardcovers and this is the third one that comes out in October next we got Bitter Root this is a series which got a lot of aplomb uh, over a year ago and I believe actually won uh, the best new series award in 2019 this is the second collection, so they've really been taking their time with this. This collects issues 6 through 10, as well as the summer special. 
Then we have Family Tree. This is uh, Jeff Lemire's latest uh, and somewhat greatest um, storyline or, or series that he's brought out under Image. He obviously partners up with Phil Hester. Um, if you know Phil Hester, he did a Green Arrow run with Kevin Smith back in the day and has done a lot of other art as well. And um, yeah, I've only heard great things about this. Haven't got into it yet. And this is the second trade that collects issues five to eight. Then I grabbed this one and I thought I'd kind of spotlight it a little bit. It sounded really interesting to me. This is First Knife. Um, yeah, it's kind of a fantasy, sci-fi, Conan the Barbarian, Nausicaa, they say, and a whole bunch of different influences. Um, sounds super interesting to me. Has really nice art and feels like more of a kind of European sci-fi slash fantasy comic brought out by Image. Seems to now just be a mini-series, but I'm not sure if it's continuing. But this collects the first five issues, or maybe all five issues, of First Knife in a trade paperback. Next up, Dark Horse. So this month, um, yeah, I, I struggled for a pick of the month, but uh, decided on Blade of the Immortal. Uh, currently, this is already collected in, I believe, 10 omnibus editions, also three in ones. But this is the deluxe edition oversized hardcover. Um, and for those of you that have been loving Berserk uh, and more recently Helsing, this is kind of another one of Dark Horse's uh, top of the line deluxe edition formats of manga. So if that's the only way you want to collect manga, then this is another one you'll probably want to try out and add to your collection. Again, this collects the first three volumes of Blade of the Immortal um, and comes with a ribbon and the whole kind of fake leather treatment you've seen on Berserk and Helsing so far. Um, yeah, as I said, this is already collected in omnibus format, but that's a soft cover omnibus, same page count, same um, contents as far as I can tell. I'm not sure if this is going to be flipped back. Uh, the originals they've had in, in Western print have all been left to right and not right to left. So if you're someone who's kind of put off by that right to left flipping uh, situation in manga, then this one will probably be uh, printed left to right. So if it's always stopped you, you could always pick this up and try it out. And this might be uh, your chance to kind of read manga in a more Western format that you like. Next up, uh, Mass Effect, the complete collection. Yeah, I was surprised by this. I'm still not quite sure what it covers. I didn't research into it. I probably should have or could have. But it does say it compiles all of the Mass Effect comic book series in, in kind of one volume. Um, it's around $35, so I expect it to be similar to an epic collection or complete collection or maybe kind of anywhere between 15 and 20 issues. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of the game, so I'll probably take a look at this and see if the art's good and the stories and read a few reviews and then decide if I want to pick it up or not. Uh, let's move on to other studios, so Boom, IDW, Only Press, etc. First up, uh, this is a huge omnibus. I don't know the page count, but this collects the entire Lock and Key series, which was in a bunch of oversized hardcovers. This is all six volumes in one massive hardcover collection. So if you're someone that has been waiting on Lock and Key, now is your chance to pick up a doorstopper of an Omni. Um, again, this is a fantastic series, uh, kind of ravely reviewed. Uh, I believe there's a series coming out on, on uh, streaming soon as well. So uh, yeah, grab this one if you're interested. Then we have the 11th oversized hardcover for the currently running Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series. This collects uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Universe, issues 16 to 22, and then uh, issues 76 to 84 of the ongoing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series. Next, for fans of humanoids and European releases, this is the second hardcover of the Meta Barons. So the original Meta Barons hardcover and the one still in print with humanoids um, collects the main series. This is the second cycle of stories. Uh, still uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky uh, on this in terms of some writing, but some different artists. It's no longer Juan Jimenez. Um, yeah, and this collects all of kind of the second cycle of stories in the Meta Barons uh, universe. Then we have something a bit more lighthearted, but something which not everyone knows is collected in hardcover deluxe editions. This is Rick and Morty. If you don't know about Rick and Morty, where have you been? I shouldn't have to inform you. I don't know. Um, look on the internet. And if you are informed and you are a fan, then here you go. This is for you. This is a deluxe hardcover treatment of the craziness of Rick 
and multi. This collects uh, issues 31 to 35 of the main series. It also collects the first four oversized, oversized issues of Rick and Morty Presents, which has a whole bunch of stuff, including, obviously, as you can see by the cover, Pickle Rick. And if you don't know about Pickle Rick, again, I probably can't help you at this stage. Speaking about crazy cartoons, this is one from uh, maybe a generation ahead of Rick and Morty or three generations ahead. This is kind of uh, early 2000s, late 90s. I can't remember exactly when Invader Sim uh, came out. But this is again a deluxe edition treatment. Uh, it's a hardcover. It collects uh, issues 31 to 40 uh, of Invader Sim. If you don't know about Invader Sim, again, look this one up. If you're into kind of crazy cartoon based comics, uh, and, and things that come from kind of the dark side of Adult Swim, etc., then this is something that uh, you'll probably want to take a look at. Next up, also TV related, uh, this is Firefly Deluxe Edition hardcover, uh, written by Greg Pack, and this collects uh, Firefly 1 to 12 plus an exclusive short story, apparently not available anywhere else. So grab it now. Okay, now we turn to one of the French masters, Jacques Tardy. Uh, this is the second oversized hardcover of uh, the complete graphic noir of uh, Manchette and Tardy. Uh, this is a kind of crime novelist who's uh, met, uh, sorry, not met up with, but teamed up with uh, the, the legendary French artist Tardy and uh, released uh, a bunch of kind of crime graphic uh, noir graphic novels. And um, this one collects uh, four of these uh, graphic novels into a uh, hardcover volume. If you don't know about Jacques Tardy, I would recommend looking him up. Um, amazing legendary artist, uh, specifically really good at kind of crime and noir based stories. Next up is the Donald Duck box set. This collects volumes 18 and 19 of the Carl Box run, um, and this is in a box set edition. Uh, I know that um, many, many European people uh, are already really into Donald Duck and uh, Scrooge as well. Um, not so big in America as far as I understand, but definitely for a European audience, this is, this is top of the pops, uh, especially in Germany, Switzerland, places like that. So if you are a Duck fan, then this is kind of a no-brainer. Again, this collects uh, two-in-one volumes, oversized, hardcovers in a box set. I recently got the um, Scrooge box set a couple of months ago. My first kind of uh, introduction to the Duck series, uh, having not grown up with it, and I was super impressed by Fantagraphics. Amazing production value, uh, and yeah, really well worth looking into. Next up, we got James Bond. This is the Reflections of Death hardcover. This is a signed edition as well. Um, what's most interesting for me here is the names on the stories here, right? So this is 128 pages, but it covers um, an original graphic novel that kind of has a whole bunch of people on it. So you've got Greg Pack, you've got Andy Diggle, you've got Gail Simone, Mark Russell. Um, yeah, some really, really big names. And it seems to be an anthology of around six stories uh, that cover, cover 007. So if you just want to get into uh, James Bond in comic, comic format, then this might be a really good place to start because looking at the, the creative list here, yeah, it's probably going to really knock you out of the park. Next up, uh, we have the Tea Dragon Tapestry. So the Tea Dragon series of hardcovers are highly acclaimed, if not critically acclaimed. I still haven't read them, but I've heard nothing but good things about them. So Katie O'Neill, I believe, has done at least three, if not four. This is the final one uh, in hardcover that's been released for the Tea Dragon series. So if you're a fan or if you're even looking to get into these, um, yeah, I would definitely suggest taking a look at this. Then we have the fourth hardcover in the Castle in the Stars collection. What's funny is I see this solicited for October, but I know it's already out in, in some territories. Again, I should say at this point, with shipping, with coronavirus, with everything going on, it's always difficult to predict exactly when releases will happen. Um, so some of these might come out uh, on the dates you see in front of you. Others may take a bit longer. In some cases, They've actually been solicited late, but have already arrived in stores like Amazon or your local comic shops. So just remember to check uh, everywhere and um, yeah, hopefully you'll get these in time. This series again, I should say, is fantastic. It's a European album format. It's a hardcover and the art and the story are just stunning and beautiful. And if you're into uh, kind of Studio Ghibli, Hayao Miyazaki kind of stuff, this will probably be right up your alley. 
Then we have uh, Ghostbusters, and funny enough, this is the year one trade paperback, and this was kind of solicited for the film that was supposed to come out in summer 2020, which we know what's happened with summer 2020. So I don't really know how this fits in, but if you kind of want to get off with Ghostbusters on the first floor and, and, and step into the elevator and understand what they're all about in the comics format, this looks like a good introduction to Ghostbusters comics, kind of that year one treatment we used to from Batman and DC and other places. So yeah, take a look at this if that interests you. Then we have the Lumberjanes. This is the third of a couple of graphic novel collections, I believe they do. This is uh, a series which has won Eisner Awards and um, is very well regarded. So if you're into the Lumberjanes, this is the latest graphic novel treatment for them. Next up, we're going to take a look at the world of manga. We've got Viz, we got Kodansha, we got Vertical. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to take a look at, at all the big releases. Again, there's lots of stuff I'm going to miss out. There's just too much manga to cover, but these are my top picks that I think you should really take a look at. So first up, we have Sayuki, uh, the hardcover collection, volume three. This is a two-in-one collection. I believe this was actually originally published by Tokyo Pop back in the day. Um, but yeah, this covers the journey to the West story, uh, famous uh, from Chinese mythology and storytelling. And uh, this is the hardcover two-in-one collection, as I said, and volume three of this comes out in October. Then we have something a bit more kind of maybe out there for me, but for other fans, maybe this is essential. So this is Transformers, and this is the manga, of which I wasn't actually aware there was one. But this is a hardcover collection based on the classic TV series. So if you're a Transformer a completionist, and maybe you like to dabble in manga or not, then this is something you probably want to go, probably want to grab. Then something that uh, I know lots of people are waiting for, this is Attack on Titan, and this is the Colossal Edition. So when I say Colossal, it's a 5-in-1 oversized trade paperback, or Tankobon, but it's not a Tankobon because it's got 5-in-1. Uh, this is 900 pages of Attack on Titan goodness. So yeah, if you want a door stopper, uh, something to lift weights with, and uh, you like oversized, weirdly naked giants attacking people that uh, attack back with sharp knives and jetpacks, then this is probably for you. Next up, Knights of Sidonia Master Edition Volume 7. This is not a 5-in-1, but it is a 2.5-in-1. So this gives you 2.5 normal Tankobon in 1 in an oversized format with stunning, stunning art by Sutomu Nihe. Um, yeah, Knights of Sidonia, great sci-fi, kind of modern, Evangelion-ish. Uh, yeah, anyway, if you like sci-fi, you like beautiful art, uh, you like giant robots fighting, all that kind of goodness, I would definitely check out Knights of Sidonia. Then moving on to box sets, this is the Tokyo Ghoul Re series. This collects all 16 volumes uh, as well as a poster as well, which almost all manga box sets not come with. Uh, so if you've been waiting or you've got the Tokyo Ghoul set already, then this is the follow-up Tokyo Ghoul Re, all in one 16 volume box set. Talking about box sets and talking about big, large, ongoing series, we have Fairy Tale. This is the fourth edition of box sets for Fairy Tale, and this continues uh, the Tankoban run. And this collects volume 34 to 43, which is a total of 10 volumes. Um, and this time, instead of a poster, I believe you get a sticker sheet. Not sure what it looks like or what it has, but if you're into stickers, then hey, why not grab this as well? Then something that really caught my eye, this is a brand new series coming out, and I will try and pronounce this correctly, sorry if I get it wrong, but this is a Heterogenea Linguistico. Um, and the first half of that sounded Japanese when it probably should have sounded more Latin, so apologies on my pronunciation. But this is a really interesting series that kind of reminds me of Delicious in Dungeon. Um, it follows the story of this linguist um, that has to do kind of field studies and research trip into the language of different monsters. So he kind of travels around with his guide and has to figure out how to talk uh, between different species and yeah, it sounds kind of freaky and weird and interesting to me, so that's why I thought I'd add, I'd add it in here just so others could take a look at it as well and see what they think. Next up, we have Star Wars, and this is a Star Wars-related story. This is Leia, Princess of Alderaan. Um, it's a story by Claudia Gray, and the art is done by Haruichi. I haven't heard about this before, um, but it seems to talk kind of about uh, Leia Organa's story, 
um, as she joins the rebellion and, and goes against the empire. So for Star Wars completionists or maybe uh, manga fans uh, who are also Star Wars fans, then this might be something that you want to take a look at. Then another kind of new series that caught my attention is Moriarty the Patriot. And the reason it caught my attention is because it's based on the works of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So it looks at kind of late 19th century Great Britain, um, looks at nobility, uh, working class and all those things and uh, gives it a bit of a manga twist apparently. So this just looks like something a little bit different and not just the standard... Um, robot fighting death whatever manga and for me this one yeah just sounds like something that could be interesting so talking not about robots but about uh, people chasing each other down with lots of tattoos we have golden kamui uh, the 18th tankaban in the series this is coming out almost monthly now and is taking up uh, lots and lots of volumes already i remember reading volume one seems like just the other day and we're already on volume 18 so i probably need to catch up but beautiful arts Super cool story based in the past. Um, yeah, don't want to give away anything, but uh, if you're looking out for the next volume, volume 18 comes out this October. Then uh, Cells at Work. Uh, this is the follow-up. This is Code Black, and this is the sixth Tankoban. Uh, this is Cells at Work with a twist, so it's based on kind of someone who doesn't lead a very healthy life, and so the little peeps that have to look after your body really have to do their job because it deals with things like ulcers and stress and all these gross things that can go on within you when you don't really look after yourself. So uh, this is pretty cool. Then we have Komi Can't Communicate Volume 9. I haven't read this at all, but I know that many, many people are loving this series. So the ninth volume comes out this October. Another big kind of fan series right now is Fire Force. This is the 20th volume that also comes out in October. I think the rest of these are actually all kind of big hitters that I'm just gonna quickly run through. Yep, Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba. This is 17. I believe the series is coming to an end, but I'm not sure which volume it ends on. Um, again, this is coming out monthly, so uh, don't kind of lose pace. I would try and grab the last few and finish up the series. And another big hitter, My Hero Academia, volume 25 comes out. And then I think this is the last one in the list, but this is the 21st volume of One Punch Man by Yusuke Murata. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Indeed, it is it. So thanks again for watching and remember, stay perfect.